Hey guys, Horth Camel ADV. We're going to do an install tonight for our one finger clutch setup for the new Norton 901. Uh, very quick and easy setup and will reduce your clutch pull by uh, up to a third. So the first thing we're going to do is crack this bolt loose and it is uh, just a pinch bolt that holds the clutch arm onto the unsplined shaft. And it's a T30 Torx. Then we can pull the arm right off and set that aside. This will not be uh, being reinstalled. So there's a rubber boot on the end of the cable here. I'm just going to slide that up. And we're going to pull it off of the end of the cable, which can be a bit of a pain. You can put uh, silicone lubricant or WD-40 if you like to get it off. Then we're going to take a 12 mil wrench and we're going to crack the jam nuts here on the cable guide and set the nut aside somewhere safe. Take an 8 mil socket or again a T30 Torx. And we are going to reuse the bolts, but we're not going to reuse this bracket. So we'll take the cable guide from our kit, slide it over the, uh, the barrel end of the sheath here, put that jam nut back on. I'm just going to move this one jam nut to the back jam nut a little bit back and spin this in. We're going to be adjusting these two nuts um, when we go to adjust the clutch, so don't be too concerned about their location currently. We're going to take the two bolts, put a small dab of medium strength Loctite on them. When you do this, you might have to come around the other side and grab the clutch cable uh, from the back. From the left side of the bike, the cable is quite stiff because it is a heavy duty cable and it can be a bit of a challenge to get that cable guide lined up properly from the right hand side of the bike. I like to take a pair of needle nose vice grips when I do this just to grab the cable here. You do not want to clamp them on very tight because you can damage the, uh, the wires, the individual strands in the cable and we don't want to do that. We just want to keep this from pushing back in to the sheath. So we're going to take our clevis end, we're going to put it over the appropriate hole. If you're using the farthest out hole here, you're going to have the softest clutch pull. Um, it is a slower release though, so if you're doing spirited riding, it's maybe not the best option for you. If you're doing a lot of stop and go riding uh, or off-road riding where you really want to be in the friction zone, definitely the outside is the way to go. I'm going to take the clevis, fit in put our clevis pin through it, and then we've got a cotter key. Put the cotter key through. If you grab the pin with locking pliers on one side, and then you can take a second set of needle nose pliers. And these cotter pins are not very big, but because they're not very long, um, they're pretty they're pretty tough. They're tough to bend with your fingers. Like so. And then we're going to thread the included bolt in. So we're going to take the open end of the clevis, slide it over the clutch cable, drop this onto the shaft. We're going to take a large flat blade screwdriver into the slot on the top of the shaft and we're going to turn this all the way counterclockwise. You'll feel it bottom out. Just take the arm off here to demonstrate that a bit better. So there's light spring tension here and then you hit the end. If you really start turning on this then you're engaging the 
uh, springs that are on the clutch plates, which is not what we're after. This is simply the return spring for the release shaft. So we're going to turn that all the way counterclockwise till it bottoms out. We're going to take our screwdriver, our T30 Torx, and we're going to tighten the pinch bolt. Like so. So our super gross adjustment is done with the position of the arm. This is the same kit that fits on the 790-890. Uh, the tank comes down quite a bit further, so we have to worry about tank clearance uh, with this arm. And on the 901, it's not nearly the same issue that it is on the other two bikes. So where we've got this right now, we can uh, tighten up these jam nuts. So we're going to hold the front jam nut and we're going to tighten the rear one. And that's that. So we've got a little bit of free play here. We're going to go up to the adjuster on the handlebar and set the fine adjustment. So we're coming up to the clutch lever here. and. This is when I give you a number here to shoot for for uh, free play. It's this gap. Um, some of the free play in manuals is measured at the end of the lever, which is fine. The problem is if you put a different lever on here, um, 10 mil free play at the end of the lever here is not the same as if you have a, a shorty on here. So I find this to be a more uh, more reliable or more consistent place to be measuring the free play. It is important to note that there's two gaps here and this little wheel here adjusts this gap and that adjusts how close or how far your lever actually is to the bars. So if you have bigger hands or smaller hands and then this is the clutch adjustment here. So this is what we're going to be working with. So we're going to loosen the big adjuster here and we're going to spin the smaller adjuster out and I'm looking for uh, about four and a half millimeters here which is about three sixteenths and if you if you start to run out of adjustment on here we can go back to the plate on the motor and move those jam nuts and we can slide the threaded sleeve on the end of the cable sheath back and forth to give us more adjustment here but we're good um, I am, I'm happy with that free play there. And then you're going to tighten this lock, lock ring. So after you've got it installed and you've got the uh, adjustment uh, in the ballpark, you're going to start the bike and pull the clutch all the way in, put it in gear, make sure the bike's not creeping, make sure that you're getting full clutch disengagement. Um, when the bike is cold, you may still get a little bit of creep. It's normal for any bikes. A lot of bikes clunk when they go into gear, uh, and it's just the oil on the clutch plates. When it's thicker, when it's cold, there's a little bit of drag there. So as the bike warms up, um, that clunk will go away. So a lot of people are coming off of bikes that have hydraulic clutches. Um, cable clutches are a little bit different. You do need to constantly be checking that free play, like you know, every ride, give it a wiggle make sure that uh, that gap at the perch is about what it's supposed to be. If you are out riding hard off-road, big climb, somewhere where you're slipping the clutch a lot, you can start to see that that free play um, starts to disappear. That gap gets smaller and smaller, and then there's no free play in the lever. And what's happening is basically you're dragging the clutch at that point. Uh, you wanna make sure when you're riding the bike that you're checking for free play. If you notice your free play is diminishing uh, as you are going through your ride, especially if it's a hard off-road ride, you could be turning the adjuster on the bars in to give you a little bit more free play. It is something definitely that you want to keep an eye on, and that's whether you have a one-finger clutch set up or not. Cable clutches on the big bikes can be a little bit, uh, a little bit fickle. So, as always, if you have any questions about the product, you can send us an email, info at camel-adv.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>